Hey, everybody. Time for Windows Weekly. Mary Jo Foley's here. Paul Therott's here. And I'm back. We're going to talk about, of course, the Windows Phone. We'll talk about Windows 8 and a big scoop. Windows 8 on tablets. Mm, we'll find out. Mary Jo and Paul are next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at c a c h e f l y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorod and Mary Jo Foley, episode two hundred thirty-seven, recorded December first, twenty eleven. Enterprise Zombies. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Go to Assist Express. Being in IT and not using the right tools can be disastrous. That's why you need Go to Assist Express, the leader in remote support. You can try it free right now. Visit gotoassist.com/windows. And by the Epson Workforce Pro, the world's fastest two-sided printer. Engineered for productivity, it delivers high-speed, automatic, two-sided color printing, copying, scanning, and faxing to keep your business running at full speed. Plus, you'll save on ink. The Epson Workforce Pro. Check it out at Epson.com. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly. Yes, I'm back, and so are Mary Jo and Paul. I'm Paul Throt from the Super Site for Windows, WinSuperSite.com. Mary Jo Foley of all things Microsoft.com on the ZDNet blogs. Good to see you both. Happy December, first day of December. It was like Thanks. November never happened. It was, <laughs> except it's a beautiful, crisp day back east, I know. Yeah, but November was like the. I bet it November was the warmest November on record. Really? Here. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that means we'll have a f horrid, freezing December, probably. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You, you would make an excellent New Englander. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's exactly the right way to think. I about checked that. the old farmer's <laughs> almanac, and it looks like it's going to be a hell of a winter. Actually, I'm going to be. Uh, you know, I'm going to be out your way, Paul. I'm going to be in Massachusetts. Well, I'm going to be in Western Massachusetts for mm -hmm. Christmas. I'm looking forward to that. That is not my way, but what, uh, it's not even close. Part? It's like two and a half it's hours. Actually, it's closer to Mary Joe than it is to me. Yeah. Where, where in Western Mass? I'll be in Stockbridge. Stockbridge, wow. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, Norman Rockwell's home. And I'm going to the Norman Rockwell Museum. Mm -hmm. Should be fun. I don't What's know out why. there? Why, Nothing's why you, out there. Well, I mean, do you have family? <laughs> family, or? family, yeah. Yeah. It'll be it'll be a lovely, lovely New England Christmas. I hope we have snow and sleigh bells. I hope we don't, but <laughs> good luck. <laughs> <laughs> May the best man win. <laughs> You'll probably win. No, I'll win, but uh, only it, over your dead body. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. So, hello, everybody. Uh, it went. Thank you to uh, Iaz for filling in for me last week. Mm -hmm. He's going to ha have to do it again next week because I'm going to be in Paris on uh, next Thursday. Okay. For Le Web, but I think he does a fine, fine job. I do have, you know, it's funny, when I miss one week, so much happens. Well, not to mention that uh, last week was an early show, too, so right. I feel like we haven't done this. In, it's been a while. Yeah, we did a, a Monday of last week. Like I said, November never existed. <laughs> we, we skimmed right <laughs> through it because of Thanksgiving. It was so, another September. Mary Jo Foley, actually, this is a, uh, this is a Win Super Site ex exclusive, isn't it? Arm? It's not. No, it's not on the web. I saved it for this podcast. You saved it just for us. You know what bugs me is I actually had two exclusives and someone else broke the other one. Damn. But I have this one left. Well, well, I know we're all uh, a Twitter, so to speak. What we will soon literally be a Twitter. <laughs> what is uh, the scoop? Okay, with the understanding that things can change. In fact, one of the interesting things about the story is that how they're going to handle this is very hotly debated within Microsoft still today. Uh, but as of this week, um, the plan internally at Microsoft is for ARM-based versions of Windows 8 not to include the Windows desktop wow. and not to have any facility for running desktop apps. And that Microsoft sees this, well, the parts of Microsoft that have <laughs> apparently agreed to this, uh, see this as their kind of pure play iPad style tablet answer. And that if you want a full Windows computer, they still have those and you'll be able to run an Intel tablet that will have the desktop and all that stuff. Um, but like I said, you know, anything could change because 
there are a lot of people at Microsoft, you know, in the same way that we debate, you know, what, what should the ARM version look like? You know, should it have the desktop or, or shouldn't it? This same debate is apparently going on still to this day inside of Microsoft. But as of now, uh, the people that don't want there to be a desktop have apparently won the day. And so I, can I ask a question? I'm dying to ask a question about yeah. that. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I have a lot of questions about this, actually. But um, so, you know, this is like the 180 degree reverse of what they were saying at Build, right? At yep. Build, they were showing ARM tablets that had the desktop. Well, so this is see, just a complete they, they were, but that was, of course, a, you know, early prototype and... You know, I think from a code simplicity standpoint, it was probably easier not to have it be any different from the bills they were doing for, you know, for Intel. So my guess is, and this is just a guess, is that as we get closer to what the final release is going to be, these things are going to have to necessarily fork in some way. You know, one of the other things in researching uh, the ARM stuff, um, after I was told this, I went back to look at what I had written and, and, you know, what else had been out there before. And one of the things I saw in his story that I wrote was a quote from, uh, remember, Intel uh, CEO Paolo Tolini had broken some information about the ARM-based versions of Windows before build. And he said, and of course he's trying to position the Intel version as being superior, right, as the as the win-win version, the one that can do everything. And he was saying that the ARM-based, that there really is no such thing as an ARM-based version of Windows 8 because you have to custom tailor that OS to every one of the ARM chipsets that essentially they're almost like per device versions of Windows 8 and are therefore very highly specialized. And I, I think when I, when I uh, kind of combine what he says with what I just heard, that makes sense to me. You know, that as we get closer to release, you know, for these things to work on those, in, those particular ARM-based tablets, you know, they're going to have to make almost what it essentially boils down to a, a very highly customized version of Windows 8. So I so think what it about, would be very what about, um, what about Windows 8? Netbooks, I mean, notebooks, you know, I mean, are they going to yeah. have the desktop or no desktop? I didn't discuss anything like that. I mean, you mean like an ARM based notebook? If yeah. they were to be, you know, because yeah. remember, there's a story in Digitimes, it was, I think, late last week, early this week, saying um, ARM based note notebooks, not the tablets, the notebooks, were going to be delayed till 2013. Yeah, I didn't. So I didn't wonder, talk. are they going to yeah. have desktop? What? The, the exact, uh, this, I can get it as close as possible, what I was told exactly was that um, the most recent builds of Windows 8 on ARM do not have the desktop, was the way they described it. I, I actually didn't even think about it in terms of notebooks. I, I, I hear that and I think tablets, so I, I'm sort of, uh, maybe I'm adding that bit of information myself. They were just talking literally about the latest build, so. Huh. I suppose that could impact those as well. I don't know. It's not I'm, the kind I'm of thing. actually really happy. <laughs> I'm happy why, about why, this. Mary well, why? Yeah, I am too, uh, by the way. Yeah, because I, I think Microsoft was trying too hard to be everything to everybody with Windows 8. And, you know, if you really want to have an iPad competitor in, an, in the form of an ARM tablet, you shouldn't support legacy apps. You should cut the cord and say, only Metro apps, and this is it. Sorry, if you, if you want legacy apps, go, go with Intel. If you don't, come come yeah. with a new clean fresh build right right i agree with that 100 I, percent. i think one of the most awful things they could do i mean imagine if the ipad could run mac os 10 apps poorly right. you know imagine if that was part of the deal yeah well, how stupid, stupid would that be yeah um, no, it I would was be so I, microsoft to do that wrong i was skeptical too actually i think you're absolutely right yeah, yeah. Um, I, i'm I, you know again i'm i don't want to I'm just telling you what I heard. I mean, I, my, my own opinion is that this is the right decision, but that has nothing to do with what I heard. I, I do hope that this is how it ultimately comes out. It is the right decision. I mean, there are questions around how you, you know, market these things. It's, it is a little strange, you know, uh, you're calling this thing Windows. So it's Windows like this Windows, but it doesn't do this stuff. And, you know, it, it, there's some weirdness there. And, and but I think it would be even worse for Microsoft to ship ARM devices, whatever they are, notebooks or tablets, that had a desktop, because that would confuse people even further, because now they would expect, just by looking at it, you would say, well, it's Windows. Obviously, it will run these apps. You know, all the millions of apps that are out there on the Internet to download, they would expect that, you know. But when you don't, yep. when you just provide that Metro style UI, by, by, just by looking at it, you can tell you're doing something different. And I think that sends yep. the right message. I think it's the right way to do it. Yeah, and when, when I asked them about this whole thing back at Build, 
it was really confusing because I, I thought, okay, so um, desktop apps on ARM are going to be legacy apps that somehow get reported or rewritten to yeah. run on on ARM tablets. So why would you even do that? Why not just make that a Metro app, right? Right, right. I mean, um, that was always the question. And people will come and say, well, yeah, but, you know, there's this command line ARM uh, compiler that could technically allow you to create a what would be basically a Win32 app on ARM or whatever. And it's like, ugh, like guys, seriously, like this is... I mean, I suppose you could come up with a reason why this would make sense in some certain category. You know, maybe if you did something like, um, you know, Steve Gibson, for example, has that drive, that disk tool that he has, right? Um, maybe you would want a version of that that would run on these devices for whatever reason, because essentially it is a PC, even though it's kind of an ARM chipset. And, you know, if he could compile that app to run on those systems, that would make his tool more valuable to people or whatever. You could, you could kind of make those kind of arguments. Um, but on the flip side, you know, I think that these things are devices. They should be simpler. And uh, that's the type of thing that, you know, normal people won't be doing on a device, you know. Um, I just don't think it's necessary. It, this, Mary Jo, you said this was a change, though, from their previous plans. Or yeah. Their previous the, pre the previous plan was, I was told, because uh, this was a big controversy right after build. Everybody was like, can you run desktop on right, ARM they, they tablets? Right, and we didn't get to really play with any Windows 8 ARM tablets. They were under glass at build, so you couldn't you really could, try it out tell. and see what was there. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, you know, they kept saying, yes, it is. That's that's what we're going to do. We're going to have desktop on Windows 8 on ARM because we're going to have the exact same experience whether you're on Intel or ARM. Uh, and I was really against that. I was like, oh, I think that's a mistake, but okay, that's what they're going to do. Um so I'm I, like I said, I'm really happy they're changing their mind on this. I I just wonder if it'll set them back at all schedule wise. Which brings us to the next story. <laughs> More Windows 8 tidbits. Uh, the yeah. next web says that there will be no Windows 8 beta till late February 2012. Yeah, we, you know I've not heard this uh, yet or, or at all, but I would just say that we've talked about the schedule and what it could have been and should have been. And if it's different from that, that to me indicates delay. You know, the first indication of delay that I got was I was told explicitly that the first build we were going to get a Windows 8 publicly would be feature complete and that that's what they were going to release at build. And that's not what they released at build. Um, you know, again, following the schedule for the previous release of Windows, CES is the obvious launching point for beta. I do expect them to demonstrate the beta or something akin to the beta, you know, a newer build at CES to show some kind of forward momentum there. But if they don't release the beta until late February, which I think is what they're saying, you know, that's a couple of months difference, basically. Um, that's a big delay. Yeah. Why? Well, I, I have been hearing, I, mean, I have been hearing no, no beta at CES. I've been hearing that for like a month or so from my contacts. And that's, I hadn't heard that's early February. January. Yeah. I hadn't heard really? February, but I, but I'm not that surprised that it might be February. Um, I just think when we saw the developer preview, I mean, it it needs a lot of work to get to beta, and there's not going to be multiple developer previews. It's going to go developer preview, beta, release candidate. So yeah, and, and how artif done. how artificial is that necessity, right? <laughs> why why no seriously? I mean, why couldn't there be an update to the developer preview that ships in December? that has updated versions of the APIs, which of course would be the important bit, but also maybe some additional stuff that's gonna be in Windows 8 that isn't in that build. I mean, uh, you know, they, they've they've very artificially determined we're gonna do one of these and one of these and one of these, and then we're gonna ship it. And it's like, you know, that's cute, but you don't have to do it that way. And I think there are good reasons <laughs> not to do it that way, right? It's just completely made up. You know, we're gonna have one of each. And, okay. But you know, the one, the other thing in the next web's report that I'm not totally convinced of is they say, okay, so if it's late February, that means Windows 8 is going to be late. Okay, so everybody's been predicting, you know, it's going to RTM around mid-year to Q3. I don't think it yeah. has to be late because if you look at how they do Office, and Office is where a lot of the people who work on Windows came from, they do a beta and then like a month to a month and a half later, release candidate, right? I mean, there doesn't have to be Yeah, so in other words, right. The beta is feature complete, thus getting to RC really only requires you to fix some bugs and respond to some feedback. That's mm -hmm. possible. I, 
Um, one of the sources who's been pretty good for me told me that the general availability in, at, at Microsoft, I should point out, uh, the general availability of Windows 8 would be at late August. And if you kind of backpedal from that date and think about it, you know, and, it, it, and it just pretend that February, late February is correct, you know, and you look at the amount of time between February and August is six months, and you could deliver a release candidate somewhere in the middle and then say you need like 60 to 90 days for the RTM before that, so maybe, you know, May, June. You could see like, okay, you know, it could happen. Uh, the only thing is, <laughs> it's hard having not seen personally any of these updated builds that they've been working on over time, what kind of progress they've made. You know, like Mary Jo said, the developer preview that we have is, in, is pretty rough. Um, you know, it's stable enough and all that. It's, you know, compared to Windows 7, it's got all the Windows 7 stuff. But the new stuff, which is the important bit, you know, the, the Metro style UI is rough. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's not doesn't work correctly or is not implemented at all. You know, we know that the mousing stuff doesn't work. We know that that special zoom mode where you can kind of look down at your entire desktop and organize things and give groups names and stuff. You know, it's not, that stuff's not even there. So I, I think there, you know... There's kind of a positive feedback loop that should be occurring that's not. And the longer you go between the desktop, uh, the uh, develop preview and then that first beta, whether it's January or February, um, that's, a long, that's a long amount of time, you know, a lot of time between those two releases. I, I, I wish there were more releases and, and more chances to provide feedback about how it's going. Remember, back, at, back when they did Windows 95, I mean, way back when, but they used to do a yeah. build every week. Oh, I, right. I remember those days fondly. I, Windows, <laughs> when Windows 98 came out, I, I had just gotten broadband living in Phoenix, and I used to download that build every Friday. That was when they did it. It was Friday night. Like, those guys would go home for the weekend or whatever. We would hammer away at the build. But I could download that thing in 10 or 11 minutes because I was, like, the, one of six people in Phoenix that had broadband at the time or whatever it was. So you had, like, the whole pipe to yourself. Ah, the good old days. And, uh, yes. Oh, I re it, was, it was awesome. <laughs> I remember having and, uh, you the first to have a cable modem. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the day I got, I was, I got Monday, you know, a cable at 9 a.m. on Monday, the first day you could get it in Phoenix. And Phoenix was the first major it was early. I city in the U.S. Yeah. that had it. And yeah. uh, it was like um, a, a house full of like those white suited Intel guys. You know, it was, it required, I think I had 13 guys from my house that day. <laughs> and bunny They suits. were going down the street and looking at the wires. And, you know, <laughs> it was like, it was like alchemy. Yeah. But, you know, it was awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I miss that. I mean, I don't, <laughs> look, I, I don't expect a new build every week. Um, every two months, three months, that would be nice. All right. Um, we are going to have a Windows 8 store. We know that, right? Yeah. We shall find out but more. But next, next week, you're, we're going to hear more. Like about what? Supposedly. What do you suspect? I don't know. They, you know, it's it's an event Microsoft's having on December sixth in San Francisco. So I don't think Paul's going. I'm not going. Um, it, there's going to be some developers there and some local San Francisco press there. I guess we should send somebody. We'll it, send somebody down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called the Windows Store Preview event. My guess is they're going to open the store. Oh, yeah. I think they're going to let the first, or at least announce the plans for doing it. You know, I. Uh, they had said at Build that they would open this thing before the final release, and I, I think kind of implied the beta would be the obvious time to do it. But, I, I, you know, one of the big issues with Windows 8 is we don't have any of these apps. And we know that developers have been working on the Metro apps, you know, since Build came out and since they got the, uh, the, the developer preview. So hopefully we can see some of the fruits of this work quickly, you know, sooner rather than later. And, and that's one of the things that could enable that to happen. Yeah, and you know there was just that report out this week from Forrester saying now window now users aren't as interested in Windows tablets as they were in the early part of this year, and you know this yeah. this may be partially a response to that, right? Like show people what they can get and work what, what they can expect, what kinds of things you're going to be able to get even if you can't get the tablet yet. Yeah, Maybe. but you know I also of course the, any anytime you see something like that, this is an opportunity for someone to write one of two stories, which is. You know, uh, Forrester is correct. You know, people don't want these things anymore. Or Forrester is wrong. That, you know, there's still plenty of demand for Windows tablets, and here's why. You know, I, it's it, in the absence of actual product, it's kind of hard to say what people will or will not do um, when those things become available. I, I do think there's a lot of pent-up demand for Windows on a tablet. And I know that's the type of thing that, you know, iPad 
fans would scoff at, but I, I just think that's the case. I mean, I think it's neat to be able to, you know, lug around something really small and light and then bring it home and dock it and have a full desktop sitting there. I think that's going to be a big deal to people. And that's true if it comes out two months from now or 12 months from now, you know. But, yeah, I mean, they, they need to show forward momentum, no, no doubt about it. What uh, what would you like to see in a uh, Windows store? Would you would you want to see more than Microsoft products, right? You want to see every you, you know. I tell you what what would be nice in the Mac App Store is if every app that I use were there. Oh my God, yeah. Because then the ability it would keep to go to right. Do. You install plus you install a new version of the OS, or you buy a new computer. Well, I just the did first that. thing exactly, the, and I just, right. So the first thing you do is go to that store and update. It has the list of everything you've ever bought, and you go click. Click, Will click, Microsoft do the same thing with licenses that Apple does? Essentially saying, uh, yeah. you can run this on any computer that you know you logged into that account with. Well, up to up to X number of computers. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're doing that. Five. That's exactly what up five. to five, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will they, yeah. and they'll, you think they will approach third party developers? I imagine they will and say, yeah. Oh, no, they already have. It, yeah. that, that's, that's the plan. That's yeah. a given. Uh, and will they sell their premium stuff like Office there? I presume so. They'll have, they have, they'll have to. Have to. The, the question is, of course, you know, Office does not fall into this licensing paradigm currently, you right. know, for the most part. I, I was actually very intrigued. In fact, I'm, I'm curious if Mary Jo had ever um, seen this before. I, I was visiting the Microsoft store online the other day, as, as we all do all the time, because it's such a fantastic online destination. <laughs> and um, They have one, really? I didn't, I didn't even yeah, know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so hopefully someday what people will know about it. But it's, <laughs> it's an interesting place. They sell uh, those signature PCs, which are fantastic. But on the flip side, the, the signature PCs, unfortunately, tend to be a little on the older side. You know, they're not always necessarily the very latest, you know, computer. So, for example, there's a a 13-inch HP that was really well-priced, and I went and looked at the reviews. It looked great, and then you realize this isn't the brand-new one. It's the one that came out in the spring. But you know, maybe it was around the Black Friday, Cyber Monday stuff. I was looking at the site, and what I noticed was you can buy Office electronically from Microsoft, which is not a shocker, but if you buy, um, I think it was this, uh, it's not called small business, but it might just be called the business version, and then they have a, a professional uh, plus or professional version or professional plus, there were actually two versions of each, and there was one that was licensed for one computer, and then one that was licensed for two, which is kind of an interesting take on the way that Office used to always be, which was one of those hidden licensing wonderfulnesses about Office, was you could actually buy one copy of it, and they allowed you to put a second version on a portable computer, the, the notion being that you would have one at work, perhaps, and then one on a laptop that you might bring home. And so... I, I wasn't aware that they were doing that, uh, that that was a, like an option. You know, you could buy two different versions. So if you ever... Uh, I didn't you, know that either. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Or, or maybe I forgot it if I knew it. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't think had, I'd ever heard they, of. Have, they had the home licensing rights. That's what you're talking about, right? For Office where you yeah. could um, have it on your work machine and then also get rights to run it at home. Yeah. I'm trying to look Yeah, essentially. Right. Exactly right. So... Yeah. Uh, aside from home and the home and student version, which is completely different, right? That one you can install on up to three computers. They give you, they actually give you three license keys. Um, the the so-called you know professional versions, the business versions. If you go to the, if you go to store.microsoft.com and you look at uh, you know the office software, you'll see they have two purchase options. If you buy it electronically, or you can buy it electronically. You can buy a box too, but you can, I believe you can actually download for each of those a version that is literally one copy install which is kind of typical for software, expensive software. And then one that is two, <laughs> you know? That seems like, it seems like a new option to me. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah but, but uh, to your point on the store, you know, what, what Microsoft said at Build about the store was only Metro apps can be downloaded from the store. From the store um, directly, that, right. Right, from the store directly. Um, and, and then yeah, legacy well, apps, you just have a link and some promotion, right? But you couldn't actually download the full version of Office from the store unless they do a Metro version. Unless they do a Metro version, right. And, and actually, the, and, and the important distinction there is that uh, classic desktop apps, you know, legacy apps or, or the apps we run today, as we might call them, uh, are not beholden to whatever the terms are for the store for Metro apps. So when we were talking about those five PC installs and all that kind of stuff, only applies to Metro apps. Um, apps that are, will be hosted on the store itself by Microsoft, right? So 
it, it's kind of an interesting thing. You know, li Office today is licensed very differently. And so, you know, this is one of those many questions we have about Windows 8, I suppose, is, you know, for the next version of Office, will there be a Metro version of it? Or can they simply bypass that restriction by saying, look, it's essentially a desktop app. Yes or no, there is a kind of a Metro front end ver that comes with it. But because it's a desktop app, you, you don't get to install this thing on up to five computers. And I can picture them doing that. The problem is when Microsoft does it with their Premier app, that kind of stinks, right? <laughs> it kind of pulls the carpet out from under the whole beauty of the store, you know. Uh, I have to give Apple some credit. They did the right thing with their own store when they brought it to the Mac, where they allow, you you know, they put all of their iLife apps, not just as a suite, but individually as well, where, where before that you could never buy them individually. And you can install them onto whatever the number of PCs or Macs or whatever uh, that they allow. And that's the right way to do it. So I, I hope I hope. I, I mean, I, I'm obviously not very hopeful or not very, um, I don't really expect it, but I hope that Microsoft does the right thing as well with their own store. Yeah. You know, you know, one other way they could do that too, just thinking out loud about this is it, there was an option with Office 2010 called Starter where yes. Microsoft um, enabled OEMs to actually put a very stripped down couple of Office apps, preload them on new PCs. And then if you, the user, wanted them, you could go and unlock them with a downloadable key. Um, yep. And then the, I, I believe they download it straight to your PC. So they maybe could get around the, the limitation that way, too, with something like that. Yeah, by having a starter equivalent that was a Metro app. And that would be freely installed. It's, it's basically ad-supported anyway. Yeah. And it only includes Word and Excel. Sure. Yeah. But... Yep. You know, again, anything that Microsoft does to kind of usurp the, its own store, you know, if, if the only way you can get OneNote and PowerPoint and uh, Outlook and whatever else is to pay a lot of money and then you lose that, per, you know, five PC thing, it, it's kind of, it's kind of tough. I, I, I hope they do the right thing by consumers and offer these things, you know the way they should through the store with that kind of licensing. I think that's the right way to go. You know, it's the right way to do it going forward. I, I have one, I have another question for you, Paul, about this whole thing. <laughs> you know, one, one interesting thing to me about the choice of date of them doing this is December 6th. That is the same date that, that Xbox goes live, right? Exactly, the Xbox right. dashboard yep. goes live. So what do you, you, what do you think about the idea that the yeah. apps, the app tab on the new dashboard could be the same as the store. When you said <coughs> December 6th, I had not heard of this event. And so yeah. as you were saying it, you said December 6th, and I thought, that's interesting. That's a big day for Microsoft people because that's the Xbox 360 dashboard update. Um, I think that it makes sense that these things would have a common back end. Uh, obviously, they're all tied to your Windows Live ID. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that would be... I think that makes plenty of sense, yeah. That maybe that's what has to happen, you know, that there's this, you know, on December 5th, the Xbox Live will go down for an hour or something overnight so they can do the switchover because this back-end Microsoft store that they're using is the same for all of these things, you know, the Zoom marketplace, the Xbox Live marketplace, and then, of course, uh, the Windows Store. Yeah. Speculation, but it makes sense. You yeah. wouldn't expect yeah. the Windows Store on Xbox, though. No, no, what, but what we're if saying they is all have the same back end? They right? all have the, the same, the same servers. Well, yeah. you know, you think about it, we don't know this. I don't know this. Maybe you do. But if you look at the Mac App Store and you look at the iTunes Store and you think, well, they didn't make it look like it. I mean, it's the same thing behind. It's, you know, they didn't re-engineer the buying of software and they're using the same servers, aren't they? I mean, doesn't that make sense? Yeah. And you can use the same right. account if you want. So they right. have the so same we, credit I, card online and all that. I, yeah, yeah. I, mean, so I don't it know makes what the back end looks so. like. But. No, we don't. But, but you can kind of imagine. That so that that's might be why it. they tie those together because they're going to shut down the server anyway that night, December 5th, and they bring it all up at the same time, and it all gets so exciting. Yeah, why not? Why not? And, and so that would, that would lend credence well, to the idea that the, that the announcement December 6th will not merely be a pre-announcement. It will actually be here it is. Could be either one, but, you know, the problem is once you go live with a story, there are people out, you know, it's on the Internet, so people can ping it and they can look at things, and, you know, someone might have found a clue that, oh, look, the Windows Store is in there. 
And, uh, you know, maybe this preemptively allows them to make the announcement rather than have oh. it happen from some hacker website or whatever. Because, that, you know, that's what would happen. Because they know that Gabe Rivera is out there or whatever. Is Rafael, <laughs> Rafael Ramirez, whatever the Brandon yeah, Watson, Godwin, whatever they know he's out there. Yeah. They know Raf. What's his name? Raphael. He he's like a ghost. Yeah. The, yeah. He's the ninja. He's out he's there. The, and yeah. uh, he'll be checking and pinging and dinging and winging. <laughs> All the rot, Mary Jo Foley. We're talking Windows. I want to talk about you, you didn't you didn't you could have brought it up in the same con context, but I, I do want to talk about Office on the iPad when we come back in just a second. Don't sit there. Zip, zip it, zip. Okay. Because <laughs> I got to do a commercial yep. right now. Eh. Zip, zip it. Time to talk about Go to Assist Express from Citrix. They've got a big and I you know it's so hard for me. I nobody should ever tell me anything that they don't want me to talk about because it's so hard for me to keep a secret. Do not tell me your secrets. Citrix has shown me the next edition of Go to Assist Express and it's so awesome. I just want to tell you all about it. But I'll tell you what, here's the beauty of this and this is one thing I love about Citrix. When they add features as they have many times to Go to Assist Express, uh, you just get it. It's automatic. You know, it's part of the deal. They don't raise the price. They don't, you know, it's just there. And I, I just love it. So what is Go to Assist Express? It is remote access for IT professionals. You know, if you're in IT and you're not using the right tool to diagnose, to access and resolve problems, then, you you know, you're slowing yourself down unnecessarily. You're hampering yourself. That's why you got to try Go to Assist Express, the leader in online remote support. Uh it's uh, designed for you, with you, you the IT, by you, I mean the, you, the IT professional or the person who does support. You know, maybe, I mean, we all do support for our family and friends, right? It's quick, it's usable, unlimited use, so you can support as many people as you want for one low, flat rate every month. It's the easiest way to control another computer and fix the problem. Eight computers at the same time, unattended support. Um, and the, I love this. You, you don't, it's not complicated for your end user. You send them a link, they click the link. There's one more button for them to press that says allow. So you, they download and install this and you're done. And it's done. It's just awesome. Go to assist.com. Go there right now and you can try it free for 30 days. Go to assist.com slash windows is the number to call. Not the number to call. I say that because my phone is ringing. Paul, this always happens to you. I've never had a phone call in here. <laughs> Ever. Awesome. It's That's awesome. me calling. <laughs> Just to prove, I've never had it. It's never, I didn't even know this Hello. thing. <laughs> it's my Ring Central the phone. Yet. Not yet. Where do I turn the, uh, oh, well, I'll figure that out. Nobody ever calls me. Now they will. Now that they know, Leo will be. <laughs> I gave out, well, we were doing an ad for our phone system the other day, and I gave out the 800 number. Said, try, I said, try our phone system. That was dumb. Yep. Yep. Go to Assist Express. I tell you what I'll give out here. Go to assist.com slash windows so you can try it free for 30 days. You will love it. And, yes, when the new stuff comes out, you'll get it automatically. So that's that's the best I can do. Don't ask me. I can't tell you. That's probably what it was. They were, they were calling saying, don't tell anybody. It's a secret. Early next year. All right, so uh, this was a big story uh, all over the place. Office coming to iPad next uh, next year. Yeah, I, this is actually Mary Jo's, but I, I, if I could quickly, this was my second. Go ahead. <laughs> exclusive today. <laughs> oh, so and, Mary, uh, it was Mary Jo that stole your exclusive. No, you know, no, I don't, no, I don't, I don't even know who originated this, but it was it just was recast the daily, the daily. across the <laughs> internet. You know, everyone wrote about it. Um, but it started with wanna, you. I just, want to I just want to remind people, last week I kind of ranted a little bit about how Microsoft needs to put Office on the iPad, like that there's no excuse for this not to happen. And then lo and behold, like a couple of days later, oh, look, they're doing it. You did it. Um, in the wake of my podcast discussion about this topic, I did hear from someone at Microsoft who told me this as well, that it's coming. And so I thought this is cool because I talked about it on the podcast, I'll hold it on and I'll discuss it on the podcast, but then someone else. Foolish, about it. foolish man! <laughs> so, you waited. Yeah. So, so, that's tell, so Mary Jo, tell us a story. Okay. So I, it's not my story, by the way. 
I didn't. I didn't break Paul's exclusive. Uh, good. <laughs> it, it was uh, the Daily who reported this, and so it's an uh, it's a basically unsourced report. I mean, they have sources, but they didn't specify anything about who these sources are. Are they Microsoft partners? Who's who's talking? So we don't really know. But they said uh, Microsoft is definitely going to do Office for the iPad, um, and that it's going to be next year. Uh, they also said, although this was pretty tenuous when they said this, they said. And of course, the apps are going to be priced like Apple prices its apps on the iPad. So like 10 bucks per app. That's the part of the report I am really that skeptical like, that about. That seemed like speculation. Um, that, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah but I mean, you are up against, do that? Yeah, but you are up against Apple's $10 office yep. suite. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, not, it, it's you know, more powerful and probably more desirable, yeah. but you are up against that. Yeah, but the, the, I, think, I think Microsoft will come out with something probably in that range, but it won't be the full version no. of Word or the full version of Excel or PowerPoint. It'll be something probably more like what Office web apps are. I mean, they sell those apps for hundreds of dollars by themselves. Um, so I, I, even on the iPad, I don't see them suddenly going, okay, let's make this 10 bucks. And if you buy it on Windows, by the way, it's $100. Yeah, $300. Although yeah, exactly. yeah. an, an iPad version <laughs> well, is not you... going to be anywhere near as capable as an Office on the desktop would be. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I, mean, no I, I think you can, you, you can look at the iWork apps uh, to get an idea of yeah. the types of things that are possible. And, you know, or I think actually what Mary just said about the Office web apps is very apt, if you will, because, um, you know, those are reduced functionality, but most of what most people need, you know, they actually work really well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bringing that kind of, and they're free. So you could make this case that what you're getting in a native iPad app is Office web apps plus offline usage, right? Local storage. Um, yeah, 10 bucks, you know, 20 bucks, whatever. I mean, that to me, that makes plenty of sense. So uh, that's not what I was told. I wasn't told that. I'm just saying, you know, that, make, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, because everybody's just going, oh, yeah, so Microsoft's, Microsoft's going to bring Office to the iPad. Huh. And so, you know, you have to think this through, right? Like, of course they would want to do this but at the same time they've got such a great advantage with office being a mostly windows platform only thing right now i mean that's why people would want a windows tablet right they'd want it to have office on it so if you sure. also put office on the ipad you're taking away that competitive advantage um and well, you're actually I, helping sell more ipads you could even argue i would imagine that a metro version of office apps would be equivalent to an ipad version which could be you know fairly close to an office web app and that you know the advantage of getting full office on full windows is going to be all the additional you know the full functionality of the of the suite you know so that there'll still be that windows advantage but like i said last week or whatever that was you know it's crazy for them not to be doing this i don't it, it's crazy that this is not out yet I don't understand what's taking so long. They may want to wait for Windows 8 tablets, you know, and oh, that's do it at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So then, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, you They're don't want to, yeah. yeah, that's a good point, because you don't want people to buy iPads now when they could buy a Windows right. 8 tablet in a few months with Office on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep that competitive yeah, edge. Yeah. Or actually, that non-competitive edge. The edge, <laughs> keep the, try to get an edge. They call it the going down with the ship strategy. <laughs> hey, you know? in for a I mean, penny, in for a pound. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, it, they've got a lot of work to do, though, right? I mean, because Office web apps, for, when you use them with, when you use them on a Mac, there there's a lot of things that don't really work right. I mean, you sure. can view documents. You can't always create documents or print documents. So that's still a lot of work for Microsoft to have to do, too. It's not like they can just take it and say, okay, now it's on the iPad. You know? Well, what is the I, I, if you think about it? What's the market for Office on an iPad? It's not. Uh, it's people who are using Office on a desktop. Because right, if you're not the, using Office on a desktop, you're, there's not going to be any driving need to put Office on the iPad. But you sort of recognize that in in various workplaces, iPads are acceptable all of a sudden. Okay. Yeah. And one of the things that would make them more acceptable, not that Microsoft wants to drive this, but is, you know, having Office available on them. You know, I know a lot of guys who, uh, well, not a lot, of, I know some guys who use iPads to uh, read, for example. Um, um, Aaron Hilgis, for example, from Big Nerd Ranch, told me that he uses an iPad now to do editing of his books. Wow. That he just, you know, in other words, you write on a computer, right. but then when you get the edits back from an editor, or you, or you want to just read your own manuscript, 
you can go in the other room, sit down in a comfortable chair, grab a cup of coffee, whatever, and, and you kind of read it. And it's kind of nice for that kind of thing. And yeah, I know perfect uh, for that, actually. a friend who works at Adobe, same thing, you know, um, uses it to read PDF documents. Um, if you could use it to read Word documents easily, I, I know you can read Word documents in, in uh, pages or whatever the Apple app is, but, you know, natively, right, and, ha and have it have that most important of Office features, which is that kind of document fidelity thing. I mean, one of the nice things about Office web apps is even though they don't have all the features, you don't, you, you're not going to view something in the Office web app version of Word, make an edit, and then put it back on the PC and have all your formatting be blown away. It preserves everything. And that is incredibly important to people who use Office because that's what they're really using is the documents, you know. And that's something you don't get. With Open Office, with iWork, with any of these, you know, Google Docs, especially Google Docs. You want to script your Office documents? Put them in Google Docs and <laughs> yeah. open them once. Yeah. You're screwed. They're all destroyed. Yeah. It's called round tripping, uh, and it, it, it's a yes, dead end. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it's tripping. Emphasis on the trip. Tripping. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that's that's the, that's going to be the major feature of this thing is the the preservation with Wiz, true wizard. Yes, exactly. And the and the and the ability to view them as they really are, not blown out, you know, like right. some of these documents can look. So, I, this is a big deal. I, I, I can't I can't wait for this to happen. I, I just don't know why it hasn't. You know, again, I, I, I guess Mary Jo explained why, but I wish it, I wish it was already available. <laughs> Keep wishing. It's not available, Paul. I, you know. <laughs> wish on, Therat. Wish on. Yeah. Good I'm luck. I'm a dreamer. You're a dreamer. <laughs> Uh, we all can dream about uh, Xbox 360. I guess next year we're talking the 720 or whatever the Xbox 360 Part 2 sure. will be. But that doesn't mean people aren't still buying 360s. Probably exactly. because of Modern Warfare 3 and Skyrim, I would guess. Skyrim's Mostly. nice on an Xbox. Yeah, yeah. I know you don't like sword and sorcerers, but I happen to be addicted. No, no, I, I don't have a problem with it. I, I just have a problem with the people that play those games. But <laughs> the, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Thank um, you, Thrun. <laughs> no, I, I know it's popular. With it's a okay. I as a segment of the as a fifty level mage, I can destruct you with my fireball. Yes, yes, exactly. And you'll never feel a thing. Yeah, we'll see how your flak jacket handles <laughs> too magic. Your AK forty seven so, has nothing on my fireball. Uh, by the way, if you want to see some awesome humor like that, uh, Reno 911 has some incredible episodes where they bust up really? like a Dungeons and Dragons game. Oh, and how it, funny. It is one of the funniest things I have ever seen in my life. And I believe there are at least a couple of episodes like that. Um, it, absolutely spectacular. But anyway. Chat room saying uh, that the reason Black... By the way, big Black Friday for, uh, for Xbox 360 and for Kinect. But they're yeah. saying... The chat room saying it's because of the, of the low prices. That was the real thing driving it. So... I, I will tell you this, and I, I, I have this uh, kind of never-ending battle with my desire to have stuff. You know, I'm always trying to get rid of stuff, but it seems like stuff's all, always coming in. And That's why you have part to get of the, rid of it, to make room. Right. Part of the reason is you can go to places like Amazon and click once and get something it's immediately. It's a little too easy to get stuff these days. Um, on Black Friday, they had a deal for a 4-gigabyte Xbox 360 with Kinect for $200. Right. Which is a smoking, smoking deal. But it's does anybody want, why do you want the four gig? Wouldn't you want the bigger drive? No, actually, I think for most people, four gigabytes is fine. They I mean, don't the put the games on there. They just store the saved games. That's yeah, a, you can play games without having to yeah. load them on the hard drive. Yeah. I, I do that for the, the, make it a little quieter, and it it improves the load time performance. I do bit. that because I you know, scratch discs, and if I... <laughs> yes. It's I mean, an insurance right, I recommend policy. it if you're going to play a lot of games. But I think for the typical family where they're going to throw it out in the living room yeah, and play right. a, you know, a couple of connect so titles. four gigs is okay. Four gigs is fine, and plus, you know, you're not pigeonholed into that. You can always go buy it, uh, the hard drive, you know, for hundred bucks. Now, later here's on the, if you here's the question: mm -hmm. Is two hundred bucks below cost? No, oh, I, <laughs> I wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Actually, so really, yes, I, selling eight hundred thousand consoles below cost, what are you losing money, but you're making it up in volume? What's I mean? I guess they make yeah, it on the game. Yeah, that's with the change bank strategy. Yeah, yeah. They, they make it on games, right? Well, yeah, this is the Razors and Razorblade right. model. Isn't okay. It? So, so that. You know, it, it, it was interesting because I asked my followers on Twitter, you know, who went out and bought these Xboxes? Like, who bought all these Xboxes? And a lot right. of people came back and said, I'm buying my third Xbox, yeah. my fourth. That's right. what I oh. think. Fifth. That's exactly what So, by the way, that's, I'm sorry, that's what I was alluding to earlier. I have yeah. three Xboxes in my house right now that work. <laughs> like, it, and 
I don't need one. But I, I mean, I was literally hovering over the buy me now button because that right. is such a smoking deal. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, how could I not buy this? You know, it's a but good that's, deal. I need three anyway. That's the, that's the battle you have I need to one fight. For the bathroom. Like, is, what a stupid <laughs> problem to have. I have, I do, I have two at home like, and Daddy, one here. We're starving. Shut up. The Xbox is yeah, on sale. It's cheap. You know, two hundred bucks. Yeah. We gotta have buy three. So they sold eight hundred uh, consoles on Black Friday. 960,000 over the weekend and three quarters of a million connects. That's amazing. It is amazing because it doesn't work. But, you know, <laughs> it's really, it's really the most wonderful scam of all time. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Because I, I have a connect. I mean, I've used yeah. it. I played Dan Central. I like that. Yeah. That's well, you understand. It. It, it can only understand the Vegas of gestures, right? right? So if you're the, the, if you're doing the, the ra connect. river rafting and you jump, it works. Listen, I, I'm sorry. You, anyone who has used a connect has done this, which is you you wave. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And it finds you. Yeah. Right. And then you start moving your hand around, and all of a sudden, the little on-screen hand jer jerks to the bottom of the screen, and you sit there and you try to make a comeback, and then you give up because it's it's dumb. It just doesn't work well. It's just the way Connect is. I'm sorry. You know, um, it's going to get better, uh, apparently. You know, there's a new version coming out next year. That, but, they, you know, when they talk about things like, you know, it's going to do facial recognition next year. You know, like, yeah, everything's going to get better in the future. I get it. But, you know, the current version is ver is really vague. You know, I think they, you know, they got it. But whatever. Well, it's Apparently, cheap. I like, think that that's the reason. I mean, when you. when you sold millions of them. Yeah. And you make them inexpensive, you're not going to make them. It's going to be hard to make them accurate. I, again, I no doubt. V, V2 is going to be fantastic. Yeah. They've also really been marketing the heck out of being able to use the voice part of Connect to um, navigate your, like, video library and all that. You know, right. say Bing, Batman, right. blah, blah, blah. So I think people are also buying it for that, too, not just because they can play I, really? games. But do, you, do you really think people yeah, know about that? Yeah, I do. That? <laughs> so I will I say do. this. I, you, are, you are correct that that works really well. That does work really well. It does. Yeah. I mean, the other, the hand stuff doesn't work well. It works. I mean, barely. But the the voice command stuff that actually works really well. So you know, mission accomplished. <laughs> 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 I don't know why. It's and, funny. And, like they they call it like a motion sensor. But you also need sensor. that for you need that for the uh, TV thing too, right? The Xbox TV service that's coming. Right. That they've you also don't need. You don't need it, but it, you can. It helps. It, it would make it a lot better, right? Yeah. Yes, I mean, I think there's a. I think anyone would agree that you could get very used to walking into a room and talking to your TV, you know, Xbox Connect or Xbox Music or you know, that that's fairly natural. Thus, the, you know, the natural computing language that we use to describe these things. It, it is very natural. This is not natural. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, this is the first I've heard about it. I thought I was, I, I love imagine, it. No, imagine if our communication system was based around waving. Like, you're talking and I'm trying to get your attention. Leo, Leo, Leo. You know, you're right. And that never worked Leo, very well. Yeah. Over here. You know, you know what that's like? <laughs> it's like the, those little uh, icons in the Mac OS X dock. Remember, they used to, um, bounce. they don't do this anymore. They fixed it. But they used to bounce. And they would not stop bouncing until you addressed it. So annoying. That's what that, right? Yeah. That's connect. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's, so that's, annoying. Right, so that, that's what it was. It was terrible. Yeah, you 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 can look at it and sort of see why they did it, and then you, and then you're happy they fixed it later because anyone who's used that thing was I, oh god, it would now, never stop. Interesting. Kingy in the chat room is sending me an article from Venture Beat that says Connect, as well as it sold in the U.S., did not sell well in Japan. They only sold a total yeah. of 114,000. So maybe, maybe there's a there. cultural thing too. Yeah, there is. You know what it is? What? Those people don't have living rooms that are ten feet oh, deep. That's right. You can't because you need <laughs> because to get far from the connection. You, you have to be at least six feet away from this that's thing right. for it to actually work. And if you're six feet away from the TV in Japan, you're in someone else's apartment. <laughs> wow, <laughs> very good point. Kind of like New York, yeah. Kind of yeah. like my apartment. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. Good luck using Connect where you are right now. Interesting. Yeah. You know, it's not possible. Interesting. Yeah, uh, SkyDrive. Let's go SkyDrive first. It's getting a, an over. We use SkyDrive for our uh, uh, shared document right now. Um, yeah. It's got an overhaul, you say, but I. But it looks the same to me right now. What's What's different? Tell me. Point. Point. point tell me what's new. Well, I don't know that you're going to see what you're doing. I'm is on a Mac and Chrome, so maybe I won't. Right. See so it. there's two things a little different here. One is you're viewing a document, right. not editing it. Right. 
And two, you're not, that's not really, you're in the, but now you're in the app. That, you're that's because really you won't let me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in other news, the Macintosh is still the best. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Right. Well, <laughs> you know I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, um. Microsoft decided to go out of business today, joining HP and Dell. No, I'm sorry. I would never do that, Paul. <laughs> Just teasing you. They have made a number of improvements. What have today. they done? What is new? It's mostly related. Well, you know, for example, the, um, if you ever did like a, I don't know who shares photos in SkyDrive yet, although I have great hopes that someday this will, in fact, be an excellent thing to do. Um, but they have cleaned that stuff up so it's a lot nicer looking. And now you can do things like, easily go in and edit the caption of a photo, for example, mm. which is kind of actually kind of a big deal. And it's kind of a neat thing. Um, but as far as like SkyDrive, the navigation stuff goes, you know, SkyDrive today primarily is, well, it's two things. It's, it's, it's a cloud service for storing files, right? And we know that they don't make it very easy to get the files into there, right? There's no Windows integration unless you go to a third party app. But as far as the actual web-based interface itself goes, it's actually it's pretty nice right now, I would say. I think that's in a, in a good spot. So they've cleaned that up. You know, they've made it easier to do things like, um, you know, rename or move things. Or You know, uh, it was hard before to have a, a file in the root of a folder and, and things like that. So they've done a nice job with that kind of stuff. And then the second half of what SkyDrive is, is it's a, basically a hosting environment for these apps, you know, for the Office web apps. And, um, and actually, this is something Mary Jo added. I, I wasn't, I'm not actually too up on this, but I guess they've added some... Uh, improvements to the Office web apps as well. Is that yep. correct? It is. Uh, yeah, that was part of this too. It, but nothing, no, again, nothing huge. It was like um, little incremental updates to Office web apps. So like OneNote web app gets link display, merge and autofill cells and Excel web apps. So they're, you know, they're flushing, 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 not flushing, flushing, <laughs> flushing. that out. One yeah, might flushing. call it flushing, but really it's not. Yeah, all right. It is a flushing no, sound, flushing. but what they're doing is... <laughs> They're fleshing out Office Web Apps. So, you know, the ultimate goal is to have everything or almost everything you have in Office on the web. But it's it's going to take a really long time. That's why you see all these little incremental updates like this. I, I keep waiting for this day. If, if, if you use the Office Web Apps to view a Word document, it's really nice. If you use the Office Web Apps to edit that document, it blows it out so that the text fills the entire width of the browser window. It doesn't retain the... I don't know if aspect ratio is the right term, but, you know, the width of the document, it just, it puts it into, you know, if you use uh, uh, the word application, um, I'm in what is this, it used to be called page view, let me, or print layout, okay? The, the layout that they use, let me, I'm trying to find the, is basically, actually it's called web layout. And what it does is it just wraps every line of text so that it, it occupies the entire width of the window. It doesn't retain the document dimensions. And so, you know, if, if you're familiar with, um, you know, if you read a book or a newspaper article, you know that, you know, you want a column of text to be pretty thin. It makes it easy to read. Likewise, when you're writing, you know, you don't want to write all the way across the screen and come back around and, you know, right. writing. You know, it would be like typing on a piece of paper that was like sideways. So it was 11 inches by eight and a half. And so the other way around, it's just, it's too wide, you know. And so every time they update Office web apps, I look to see if they fix that. And they, they still have not fixed that. A little irritating, but, you know, I think that's one of those things. As this thing matures, like she says, you know, they're going to add more features and, and, and fix things over time. And someday we're going we're gonna to arrive at this wonderful day, I can't wait, where I don't even have to install Office anymore. I can just um, use the web apps. Yeah. I, that's, is that what Microsoft wants to do? I mean, it's kind of hard for it to do no, it because uh, Office no. is such a cash cow. <laughs> yeah. That's no, a problem that's probably not what they want. Yeah, it is. It's a, it is absolutely a problem, yeah. Uh, what if I could, well, you know, I would pay, I would pay, uh, you know, a yearly subscription fee for a very nice version of this, you know, like the pro version or whatever. I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, I would, same uh, here. I don't care if I have Office on my PC as long as I could use what's in oh, Office. And well, have work. That, that, so that gives, that's actually a, a model that Microsoft can, probably has always wanted. They've always wanted the subscription model for the desktop software. Just put it on the yeah. web. Uh, you know, what's the difference really? A well, lot of money. <laughs> is it, yeah, can't you charge enough money, is, like 20 bucks a month, to make it pay yeah, off? Yeah, I think the difference is money. Yeah. People I won't pay that? 
What's the most you could charge for an office suite monthly? Monthly? 20? 15? No, it's way too much. It's no. too much. You know, th this, it, this would have to be part of, like, for example, Office 365. The cheapest version of Office 365 is $6 a month. Yeah. Right? It can't, so it's you can't. Bucks. And even then, is it getting take uptake? Even at that price? Yeah, actually, they just it announced uh, 5 million uh, licenses. Yeah. Already, wow. I think. So that's got to kill them because that's probably 5 million, well, maybe not 5 million, but some million number of people who aren't buying the uh, Office suite. Well, uh, well except I, I, the $4 version of Office 365 isn't really Office, uh, right? It's yeah, it's right, link and exactly. SharePoint, right? Oh, okay. It's not... It's not Word, Excel, PowerPoint. And you, so you want the desktop office to use it. You need it. I, I bet a lot of these people have they do office have on the desktop as so well. So that's even better then. Then it's all upsell. Yep. Yeah. yeah. For Microsoft, uh, yes. it's all upsell. Yeah. I, 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 right. If you imagine a typical small business, uh, startup, whatever, I mean, you could imagine a lot of those people are going to want to have some version of office you on need their a desktop. Laptop. Yeah, you need, yep. a, you need a desktop. Yep. Of course you do. Every idiot. I would think so. I would think so. Let's take a break. We're talking to Mary Jo Foley, all things Microsoft.com. Paul Therott, the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. We've got more Windows phone news. I got my uh, my Samsung uh, oh, you did. Focus S. That's a good one. I like it. I was kind of hoping for the Titan because it's just because it's massive. Yeah. Um, but you know what? That, that's a big phone. That's the one I'm using right now every day. Yeah, well, and, I was uh, using the Focus, so this was a logical successor. Yeah, uh, to bigger the screen, yep. much better camera. Yep. That's a a little green. The camera's a little green. Uh, you know, a little oh, really? green. I find a little green cast on it compared to the iPhone. The iPhone's such a good camera; it's kind of tough to compete. I think it competes well with. In fact, I think well, it's the same camera as in the Galaxy. That one's, that one's pretty close. Uh, the uh, the HTC Titan, I think, was the only one on the Windows Phone side that was as good as the. I I love the live tiles in Mango. I think that's great. As you can see, I've missed yep. twenty two phone calls. Just love no and forty messages. Just love knowing that. Uh, <laughs> Actually, you know what the worst part of that is? Is um, when you flip back to the home screen, and you have new messages, they they flip so that the numbers right. And it, like if you're someone like me who gets a lot of email, it, it will say <laughs> like it's like two, seven, <laughs> seventeen, twenty four. You're like stop, stop. And it's like you know thirty eight. No, no, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, every every morning it's like that with the phone. You're like oh, like it's just it's awful seeing them wind up like a roulette. I, I bought a weather app that had, I don't know what the best weather app is for the uh, live tile, but I bought a weather live, which seems fine. Uh, nice. Yeah. Metro E. It's Metro E. I use the AccuWeather. AccuWeather. All right, I'll have to try that. I have always loved the uh, pictures, uh, the way it kind of does the pan and zoom yeah. on that. I think it's yep. nice. It's good. Yeah. Very simple, easy to use. I've not, you know had any trouble with it. I, I, you know, it's great. It's a good phone. Um, and it, it is it is very snappy. So yeah, this is a so that's the one you're using, huh? Yep. Well, we'll talk more about uh, Windows Phone and Mango. In just a bit. Right now, though, I'd like to talk about my friends at Epson. I'm willing to bet that uh, you and Mary Jo have used an Epson printer or two in your time. I just used one yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. How can you? How can you not use an Epson printer? I'm. I'm thinking back. My first tractor feed was the. Uh, was it MX80? Remember that? What a great printer mm, that I was. I do. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> classic. Yep. Oh, I've just killed my lower thirds. What happened? I want to show an Epson lower third. Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, so Epson came to us and said, uh, hey, Leo, would you be interested in, um, do you like Epson? I said, what do I like Epson? Just walk around the office. I have, uh, Sarah's got an Epson Artisan printer on her desktop. I have an Artisan at home. Um, we've got uh, an Epson laser for our big office all-in-one. We've got an Epson projector in the biz in the office. I've got an Epson the cinema projector at home for watching movies. Uh, what else? Oh, the Perfection scanner. I'm an Epson guy. And for photo printing, I have the wide carrot Epson. I said, well, okay, that's enough. Stop. You, you, <laughs> what we want to talk about is the Epson Workforce Pro. And I said, well, I don't have it. And they said, well, no, because it just came out. Can we send you one? So they sent me an Epson Workforce Pro for the office. And then I bought one for my house because I like it so much. It's an all-in-one that solves a lot of problems people uh, have uh, with uh, inkjet printers. Yes, it's an inkjet for the office. And I know some of you saying, oh, the consumables on inkjets are too high. I don't want to do it. No, let me tell you, this is economical. This is, uh, does things that only an inkjet could do. 
We've actually replaced our laser uh, printer with the uh, inkjet uh, printer because it's so economical. 50 percent less per page versus a color laser. Beautiful, brilliant color for those business presentations and graphics and so forth and so on. Uh, and it's super fast. And one of the things I really like, it does double-sided printing. So you'll save on paper, too, when you double-sided uh, print with the Epson Workforce Pro, the 50, 4530 all-in-one. It does scan. It does fax. It does copying. Two-sided, two-sided color printing faster than anybody else. In fact, you'll get Two-sided prints faster than your laser printer can give you a single-sided print. And with the extra capacity ink cartridges and paper uh, uh, holder, 500 sheet paper capacity, 580 sheets. That's more than a ream. So I never have to, ch I don't change paper nearly as often. Um, and the ink cartridges, they're big. I mean, I have to pull one out so I can show you. Uh, they are huge, and that means you don't change them as often, and they're more economical. This is a great printer. Also, if you have iOS, it prints directly from an iPhone or an iPad. You just select the print command, and, and, it, and it sees it. Because it's, wi it's on the Wi-Fi network, it's uh, got Ethernet, it's got USB. This, is, this does everything you could want. I just love this printer. I want you to take a look. In fact, they're suggesting you get it for your business for the holidays. <laughs> Put it in the stocking at your work. <laughs> if you're the boss, you'll love this. The Epson Workforce Pro. The one we're using is a WP4530, but if you go to Epson.com, you'll see a whole bunch of great printers. Um, this is just a fantastic... Actually, they want, I'm sorry, the 4540 is the one I have. I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, the 4540. Epson Workforce Pro, the whole line is fantastic. Check it out today at Epson.com. I hope we can do... I mean, I could do ads for every Epson product there is. I even had... Remember the one, the Radio Shack... A Model 100 was big. Epson made a Model 100 that had a built-in printer. I can't remember the model number, but I had that one. Just, I just, I'm a, I'm a, remember it was Epson Seiko, right? Seiko Epson. <coughs> yep. Ah, yes, the MX80. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> MX80 sounds yeah, like a Yeah, it did weapon. sound like that. <laughs> We've come a long way, thank God. <laughs> Uh, moving along here to uh, our next item, let's talk uh, a little bit about Windows Phone. Finally. Finally, the Dell Venue Pro is getting Mango. What is the? I don't even remember the Venue. Wow. Are people excited about this? No. It's actually a pretty cool phone. Is it seven it is inches? Like is it huge? <laughs> Like the street. No, it's no. um, it's kind of like a BlackBerry type phone. Oh, interesting. So it has a keyboard. Yeah, one of the what rare. Carrier, what, ca phone. what carrier was selling that one? AT and T, I, I believe. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Dell would sell it directly. I think too. Cool. So they're yeah. getting Mango. So, yeah, it's good because Dell's been kind of non-committal when everybody's been asking him, you know, what are you going to do for Mango? You're going to have Mango phones. You're going to have next generation phones after Mango. Dell's being pretty non-committal, so I think people yeah. were kind of worried. Like, are we even going to get the Mango update? I mean, they were, but it's just taken them an extra long time to get it. So good, it's out. And Lenovo, of all people, is going to start doing Windows phones. Yeah, mm -hmm. this makes sense. I mean, yeah, they're, they're suddenly Lenovo is one of the world's biggest PC makers, right? So obviously, they're big Microsoft partners, and right. they sell a uh, a Le phone. <laughs> if you will, that um, it looks and works and is, you know, very much like a Windows phone in the same way that, you know, a Galaxy S2 is a lot like the phone that you have now, the Windows phone. So right. you can kind of see the underpinnings are all there. Why not? You know? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a little hard to decipher the Chinese page on which <laughs> this was uh, described. But, yeah, yeah. apparently, <laughs> based on the Google <laughs> Auto Translate, um, yeah, sometime late in 2012, they're going to come out with their first Windows phone. Yeah, the translation was a little confusing. It was like, yeah, we're thinking about doing a Windows phone. And we already have the schedule. It's next year in the second half. <laughs> exactly. So, You're like, all right, so which part of this? Are you or aren't you? <laughs> we're thinking hard. <laughs> yeah. In fact, we've thought so hard we have a launch day. Speaking of <laughs> launch days. If, if you let him talk long enough, he'd just show it to you, and then they would be selling it. <laughs> Speaking of launch days, we're, we're now seeing from the Boy Genius Report, which has in the past been really good on iPhones, Mm -hmm. uh, they're reporting that the Lumia 900 yes. will be in the U.S. early 2012. 4.3-inch uh, clear black AMOLED display with a 1.4 gigahertz processor, 8-megapixel camera. 
Same form factor as the 800 that they've got in Europe right now. According, this is according to Board Genius. Uh, yeah, but, so are, but a yeah. big screen, unlike the, uh, unlike the uh, European 3.7-inch screen, we're going to see something that's more standard. You know, I had this debate on MacBreak Weekly this week. I, I just feel like Apple, by sticking with a 3.5-inch screen, is really getting starting to get left behind. I think people want the bigger screens that we're starting to see now, the 4-inch and, four and up. Yeah, right? I do too. It's, it's, it's hard. You know, the iPhone is beautiful, but when you go to one of these bigger screens, it's like, oh, you know, it's, just it's, just, it's so much on the nicer. Eyes. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the things I liked about the HTC Titan, frankly. Even though it's a big phone, um, it's very thin, which kind of uh, undercuts the bigness in some ways. But then you see the the fonts on that thing. They're so big and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's something nice about it. Yeah, It's big, though. I mean, I tried to hold that it's, Titan. It's, it's, yeah. What's, oh, the screen, you know, what's, what's the screen size on the Titan? 4.7, I think, Ooh, isn't it? Or, seven. Okay. So it's yeah. interesting. Right. I mean, Mary, but, but Mary Jo is normally sized. Right, so unlike you. It is... <laughs> It is understandable that you would have a hard time holding this phone. But Paul, it, Paul know, lives the, in the land of the giants. Yeah. So I was like, I looked at that. I was like, yeah, baby. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> a big phone for a big man. Yeah. The Paul Bunyan phone. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I, mean, I like bigger. I like bigger. I like the bigger screen size just because it's easier to see, easier to browse the web, exactly. right? But. But then you're like, okay, I have to hold it with two hands, right? And <laughs> right, like like an iPad. <laughs> well, there is a there is some point. Now this is the uh, Galaxy. Uh, S2 from Sprint, which is, I think, 4.6 mm -hmm. inches. That's just about right for me. Um, yeah. And I have a 4.3 inch. But 3.5, even though it's higher resolution, the iPhone I know, is, it's just, is it's starting to look... I would be tiny. happy to give up, like, dots per inch. Like, have the same resolution with a bigger screen it would make a tremendous difference on the, I, on the iPod, uh, iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, typing is easier on the big screen. I agree. You know, the, everything's the bigger. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, just a big deal, it, uh, you know, obviously. Well, I ordered, um, <laughs> a, uh, I ordered the new uh, Google uh, Nexus, the Samsung Nexus, which is uh, yeah. big. No, how did and you order it? I mean, did from, you order an unlocked one? From, you unlocked from Great Britain. I'm waiting okay. for it. But the, the thing I find intriguing is it is a big screen with high resolution. It's 1280 by 720. Yeah. yeah Not yeah, quite yeah. retina, but close. Now, uh, now you're cooking, right? Maybe. Yep. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think so. Yeah. I'm yeah, very, I'm going to get one of those I hope there is phones. the new Lumia. I want the new Lumia. I want it on Verizon, please. I, don't know. I, I think, you're, yeah, I think you're going to be in good shape. There is somebody in the chat room, obviously a European who has a Lumia 800, says he loves it. It's a great phone. Yep. Um, I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, I cannot, and I, I, now this explains a little bit about why they didn't release it in the U.S. They were waiting a little bit longer to get a bigger screen, um, a more something that probably in it's, Europe, you know, it's it's so American. We need the big American. SUV. We want the Apple SUV Apple. phone exactly. Yeah, the the, the uh, VW Polo is not going to make it in the U.S. We need to to have a you know, Roatan or whatever those things are called. Those <laughs> exactly. ginormous. Uh, the Touareg. Yeah, yeah Touareg. Touareg. A terrible name. I don't know who. It's the that same thing, isn't it? I mean, it's like you know, we can't. No. You know, we can't. We can't stand to have a little phone. We have to have like you know, it's like that. You know, you want to pull it out of your pocket and have to do that exaggerate. Hold on, let me check my phone. <laughs> you know. Well, you saw that Samsung <laughs> ad mocking the iPhone fanboys all in line waiting for their new iPhone and looking yeah. over the fence at people, real people who had big phones going, "Ooh, gosh, that's yeah. big. Ooh, yeah. that's pretty." <laughs> It's, it, it's it, but, you know, the problem is, and I, I know why, the streets are very narrow in Europe. You can't get one of these big phones down those streets. It'd, just, it'd be like hitting someone with an umbrella when you're walking down the street. <laughs> they just won't do it. Sorry, I was checking my email. You know, Clonk, hit someone in the eye. You Americans and your big phones, get out of our country. <laughs> yeah. So Microsoft Security Essentials. Uh, first of all, let me ask you a question because somebody in the chat in the uh, uh, in the radio show we were talking about antivirus. Uh, it was my memory that Windows 8 will have an antivirus built in, right? Yes. So, uh, uh, oh, I know who I was talking to. I was talking to one of our sponsors, ESET. <laughs> they make a standalone antivirus, and I said, you know, it, this must be challenging. First of all, now there's Microsoft Security Essentials. At least you can make the argument. Well, MSE is free, but it isn't as complete or as fast as as the third party AV but once it's built in and it's just part of Windows 8 yeah well I, actually I would say that the 
the people who sell security suites are selling other things, exactly. right? Exactly. That's it, what they said. We're it's selling this much full more now. Platform of you know right. we have uh, right you know kid protection for kids. We have you know website tracking. We have you know this and this. Is thing, so. in your opinion MSE as good as a standalone antivirus? Yeah. There's no reason to get to buy an antivirus unless you my want. Kid, my a kids use this. My that. wife uses it. I yeah. use it on all my computers. I look at my kids' computers from time to time to make sure there's no silly extra browser toolbars and stuff going on and you know we've had issues here and there but um no more than that you know um by and large it's been fantastic and i've never had anything so yeah i think uh microsoft security essentials combined with a healthy amount of common sense is all you need personally so msc on windows 8 is going to be inside defender or defender plus msc do we know it's inside Defender. So Defender inside. is, they're adding uh, anti-malware definition, I'm sorry, antivirus definition and scanning and all that stuff uh, to that same engine, which is, you know, basically what, it's what MSE is today when you think about it. You install MSE and it disables Defender, so now it's kind of going the reverse route. They're just renaming it. It's it's basically MSE just built in. Defender's a great name, though. I think that's, that's a good name for it. <laughs> right. I'm a Defender. Defender of so, the but realm. But, but so what's the deal with this beta, though? I don't actually, this is something I don't know anything about. Well, yeah. Mary Jo, do so, you? I do. Yep. Uh, so Microsoft, um, about a week or so ago, was signing up testers for the new beta. And uh, they actually gave those testers who signed up the bits this week. So um, on the list of features, it's kind of a minor update, I believe. Um, it's going to just make things faster. So general performance improvements. Uh, a simpler UI, supposedly. Um, and then they say, this is a little curious. Maybe you know more about this, Paul, but they said a new and improved protection engine. So I don't know if that means they're actually changing out the engine that's in MSE or if it's just, you know, new and improved, meaning just we're adding some more definitions yeah, to it or whatever. I think it's just new and improved. So I, I'm not up on the release schedule of these various products, but that engine is the same one that they use in the Forefront products. And it's also the same one they use in an online scanner that they have. And so I'm guessing that that thing just is something that gets revved over time. And maybe now they're building. The, the but, but it's not it. the same one as an MSE? No, it is the same. MSE, but, in other words, yeah, MSE has the same um, engine in it as the product called um, Forefront, Microsoft Forefront Endpoint Security. I got they it. They have the exact same engine. So it's the one, it's the, they acquired Giant Antivirus as the same and then upgraded and improved it. But that's always, that's the engine going forward. Well, actually. Because yeah. um, I got the, I got it, you know, I couldn't figure it out. I said, well, why do they. Giant, why well, Giant, well, I downloaded actually, the new MSE and I didn't see any, I, I didn't understand what was going on. So it's. Giant didn't do antivirus. They did oh. anti-spy. Um, okay. Okay. It's what Microsoft calls anti-malware. So um, the capabilities that are in Defender in Windows 7 today is the, the, the direct descendant of that giant software. It's, it. it's uh, anti-malware, if you will, right. you know, spyware. Right. Uh, antivirus right. is a different thing. Um, and, the, and the forefront server products have different capabilities. You know, they allow, and some of the products allow you to plug in different antivirus engines, and you can use weird combinations of them, uh, some of which are known to be good combinations for certain uses. So, for example, if you're trying to prevent, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, the passage of bad software over exchange or something, you know, they'll be like, okay, well, these two seem to work well together and give you the highest, you know, uh, rate of success or whatever. So you can do different things like that. But as far as the uh, the client goes, yeah, it's, it's Microsoft's, I believe it's homegrown. I'm not sure if that came from an acquisition or where it's from, but it's there. It's Microsoft's now, whatever it is, uh, anti antivirus as well as anti what they call malware okay but it was all under the hood because i did the download and it all looked the same to me i didn't see anything yeah and when they went from version one to two they changed the ui around a little bit and i haven't looked at it. so have you looked at the new one i guess it looks a little different yeah it's a little, i haven't little different. looked at it. it it doesn't uh, you know what i wasn't it paying almost doesn't enough. matter you it doesn't don't matter yeah you don't never see it. it if if life is good you never right. even know it's there you know it's just it, it's right. off of the background running so uh, I, you know, we talk about this. You talked, you were on uh, TNT last week. I know Mary Jo was on yesterday, our uh, Tech News Today show. Uh, and they covered tech news every single day. So they get to say new Yahoo takeover rumors almost daily. Yeah, the <laughs> Yahoo takeover rumor of the day. I just find this thing to be very interesting and very convoluted. You know, for example, yeah. um, Yahoo owns Alibaba. Which Alibaba is, the Chinese is Google. 
It's yeah. not Google, but it's the Chinese search engine. Okay. Alibaba is teaming with a group of other companies to try to buy Yahoo. <laughs> All right. And now you have Microsoft, who is teaming with a group of other companies, one of which is run by Mark Andreessen, formerly of Netscape, trying to buy, not Yahoo, but a part of Yahoo, a, stake. So a minority stake in Yahoo, and that their plan is to, uh, well, find a CEO. I don't think they have a CEO, like a permanent CEO, and replace three of the board members, one of whom would be replaced by Mark Andreessen, <laughs> Microsoft's <laughs> former enemy. And, and I think I mentioned this on the podcast last week, but I guess you weren't around. But my, my theory about this stuff is that Microsoft's overreaching aim is to just ensure that their search partnership with Yahoo continues. It has to be that because right. Yahoo represents the 10 biggest chunk. 10% or something. It's a huge amount of their search. Oh, no, no. I mean, if Microsoft's search uh, percentage is more like 75%. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's total search market share, right? It's right. Yahoo is the biggest uh, part of that. Okay. So the only thing I can think of, aside from the silliness of all these like, kind of weird uh, groups of companies and, and, and their various aims and goals, you know, some people want to buy it outright. Some people want to buy just, you know, part of it. Yahoo isn't sure. You know, they had a meeting this week of, uh, of their board of directors. They're not sure if they want to sell the whole thing now or if just oh, part God, of it. God, I don't, you know... I know it's a big drama, but you know I think uh, from our perspective, the big the story here to me is that Microsoft's interest in a company that is now valued at less than half what it was when Microsoft made their original right. bid four years ago um, is to protect that Bing search partnership. I, I have to think that that's makes sense. What this, that makes sense. And they've they've even said that you know so er, you see so many reports going Microsoft's changed its mind. It wants to buy Yahoo. No, they don't. <laughs> Yep. They do not. <laughs> they they even said recently during a call, like, no, we're, we're really happy we didn't buy them. You know, and all they're trying to do is make sure whoever buys them, whatever group it is, doesn't unravel this partnership they have because they need Yahoo for the search partnership. It would be I mean, they're right. totally dead. Yeah. Microsoft so. is, is focused on some really core things right now, right? The next version of Windows, uh, Office 365 and the next version of Office. Office on the iPad, perhaps. Um, to have, I mean, to, to distract Microsoft right now with the purchase of Yahoo would be ludicrous, would be the worst possible. But this would set the company back for years and would never turn into anything valuable for them at all. There's well, that's there. even the larger story. It's pointless. Yeah. Absolutely pointless. That's what I mean. It, it, but it would do such irreparable harm to them at such an important time. But to protect their search business with Bing, this thing that they've worked so hard and spent so much money on, and really, you know, they try to, you know, make the lemonade with it, but I mean, you know, this 700 still, million last quarter or whatever it was. Very right? much a minority. Uh, so by the, buying so a minority stake, getting a seat, a couple of seats on the board, that's how they protect themselves. Yeah. You've and got that's your, sufficient. Yes. I, I, the goal is status quo. We want this company to continue and we want them to continue using our Bing engine in the background. Because, you know, Yahoo doesn't have their own search technology, you know, the, the, the core engine stuff. It's all gone. And yeah. One of the, I mean, you'd have to think, Google could swing in and say, we'll give you a way better deal on this. And, oh, by the way, you already know we do a better job of search, so why wouldn't you want us? You know, and that new owners might be inclined to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. But if you have a minority stake, you don't have a controlling stake. Well, it's actually, um, depending on how you work it, you know, they, they could have, uh, you remember that they're replacing three of the board members. So what you do have is some influence from right, that kind right. of standpoint. So Yeah, it's, uh, so it would be a defensive move against Google or Alibaba. Against, I mean, Alibaba against, could yes, be a threat. Absolutely. What if they license tech, you know, technology from... I don't know. Well, I don't know if anybody in the... They're probably not big friends of... Yeah, okay. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in the U.S. Right. Talking one. crazy talk. But, you yeah. know, I'm just... Oh, I use really Yahoo just, all the time. I love that Alibaba. <laughs> it's protection against the unknown future. In other words, Yahoo is clearly like the sinking ship. I mean, they're, they're careening without any sense of direction. So you want to... You don't want to continue that. But, I mean, you, you want to make sure that when it lands and when it stops spinning... They're still paying you money and still using your service. You don't want it to change, what, however it might change. Do we know what any of these numbers are? Like what how much money, how much revenue there is to Microsoft from this? Um, oh. How much the minority stake that they're contemplating would be? So actually, the, you know, I don't have, I, I'm terrible with numbers and, and don't have access to this off the top of my head. But, um, you know, one of the things I do know is that the Microsoft deal with Yahoo has built some built-in 
parameters related to ad revenue and how things are going. And, and, and apparently, uh, Bing has actually underperformed for them. It has, it has actually done pretty bad. Hmm. And this is something both Yahoo and Microsoft have talked about publicly over the past 12 months. Um, so Microsoft, you know, has pledged to, you know, improve the situation or whatever. But um, I, I suspect there is some unrest. And I'm sure from Yahoo's perspective, they're thinking, look, look, our value has gone downhill dramatically. And this thing that you promised was going to be great hasn't been as good as you said it would be. And that may be, you know, that's part of the concern, like they've already complained a little bit about you know, the yeah, Microsoft actually had to make extra payments to Yahoo to make up for the difference and um, yeah. Put, yeah, put agreements in place to assure them that they were going to continue to support them and all because I, I guess there were some issues around um, the advertising platform alignment, as I kind of remember it. So, yeah, I mean, they, they don't want any more problems with this partnership. It took them a while to hammer it out, <laughs> and they're really, yeah. really involved in it now and dependent on it basically for... Uh, you know, continuing Bing's growth. So even we, if it's just a minority We can't state. lose money as fast as we're losing it if we don't have Yahoo in the mix. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah, the one thing that you could do is lose it a lot faster. So, so yeah. um, you do want to avoid that. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Why, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> Whatever, Whatever's going on, it doesn't <laughs> sound good for anyone. Uh, finally... Do you, do you, do you, Go ahead. I just uh, they used to be the darlings of the internet I era. Know. Remember? I love. They I were still love Flickr they, and delicious. They were cameo. Yahoo cameos were in movies. Yeah. Uh, do you, right. I mean, uh, this. What ha I what the heck happened here? I don't know. You know, we actually had a very sad moment in San Francisco a few weeks back. There's a very mm -hmm. famous Yahoo sign. In uh, the a yes, big on neon the sign on the highway, yep. um, just out of San kind of old-fashioned looking. It's I, you know, it was kind of to me. It was always kind of this is this kind of to me represents uh, Yahoo. There it is, and it was. Well, it but, looks like Las Vegas. It says vacancy no, when, Yahoo, a nice place to stay on the internet. You need to find a picture like that of uh, during the day, though, because what you're not getting there is that it, it it really has the feel of a, a 1950s. Chevrolet dealership sign. It's got this. Um, <laughs> no, it's like pink and purple, and it's it it, it really has a, it's a the Yahoo colors. kind of an old fashioned vibe to it. Yeah, and it really was a landmark. So you just took it, was. it down. Oh, okay. And I think that's a kind of that's kind of like well, the last See, person yeah. <laughs> Yahoo turned out the yeah. lights. They, someone should have declared it a national historic landmark or something like the like the Sitco sign in, in Fenway Park. You know, or in, it is. It's like the uh, Sitco sign. Does Sitco still exist? Yeah. As a as a city service as, as a, a separate entity, as a gas yeah, probably station. not. No. no, I mean that. No, I no. Believe but so. that there's the purplish. Yeah, there you uh, go. Yahoo. That's during the day. It was a cool sign, yeah. and they, you know they'd had it there for I'm sure ten years. It was there forever, uh, but it is no longer a nice place to stay on the internet. <laughs> and so they're going to close that. They closed down the Yahoo Motel. Among, uh, they should have things. changed that slogan with whatever it was that Carol Bartz wrote to uh, employees before think, she left from her. I think maybe Carol took it with her. That was like her severance. Yeah. Here, you get the sign. <laughs> it's in her front lawn now. So um, I can't remember. I think I read on you. You're the you. It's you and me, Paul. Are the only guys who like the Kindle Fire. Everybody else is slamming it. We had Kevin Rose on Twitter. He said, "I hate it. I think this is for two hundred bucks. This is a great little tablet, and I recommend yep. it to people. And I think you agree." Yeah, I, I, the weird thing about it is it's not for me. No. Um, as as a, I, I hate to say power user, but as someone who has, I guess, very particular needs, I have wanted a, a tablet of that exact size and shape for a long, long time. But what I want on there is a lot of storage, and I want to put local yeah, content on it. very little storage. It's not for local yeah, content. Yeah, it's not for that at all. And, and honestly, I recognize that what I'm asking for is kind of a niche usage scenario that a lot, most people don't want that. Um, I can tell you that, you know, for normal people, <laughs> you know, the fire is fantastic. And it, and it's not just fantastic because it's 200 bucks. It's not like, oh, it's good for the price. Like that, it's just good. It's, it's, it's I'm well made. You. And it's we're, nice. you and I, all of the geeks, Yeah. Andy and Notco, Kevin Rose. I think Rose, people can't see beyond their own little I must be because I, I just, I'm, I'm blown away by this. And yeah, I think I for too. a lot of people, this is a great gift. Yep. Um, I could, and Amazon has sold or is planning to sell millions of them. We don't, they never give you numbers, 
But the rumor yeah, is they've they made have, five million. I know they don't have to suffer some yeah. reason. Well, they did say millions, but they were combining that with Kindle devices as well. So well, they've I already sold millions of yeah. the new devices. They'll sell millions of the seventy-nine dollar Kindle too. That one's great too. Yep, I'm a Kindle fan. Anyway, I have a Fire. I don't, you know, I, 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 you know, I use it from time to time. But if you have an iPad or well, I can tell you, and this, by the way, this is a true story. My wife is not into technology, but she looks at that thing and she says. I want a Windows 8 tablet that looks just oh, like this. Oh, interesting. That's seven, the exact size inch. she wants. Yeah. yeah, I like 7 inches. I think Apple is very wrong. Or Steve Jobs was very wrong when he said nobody wants a 7-inch tablet. It's half the resolution, half the size. Well, in his defense, he also said no one wants to read anymore. Yeah. And then they did iBooks. Yeah. So he, it may have been disinformation <laughs> on his part. It we, could be in the know. pipeline. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I it's not. So because I'll, honestly, for me... A seven-inch iPad would be perfect. It's just the right size. I, I know yeah. there's something about seven. I when I got the seven-inch Android, uh, the Samsung uh, Galaxy Tab, I loved that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't like the operating system so much. But uh, uh, I think the problem Apple's facing, frankly, is they are desperately trying to avoid the fragmentation that Android has of 18 different screen sizes, which kills developers. Except that. There's no reason why they can't have a seven-inch version of the iPad that has a 1024 by 7. Same resolution. Exactly. Then, you, then you solve it. Perfect. Yeah, that's the way to do it. You're right. All right, we're going to get our uh, tip of the week, our software pick of the week, our enterprise pick of the week. And Mary Jo, do you have a code name as well? Of course. Of course she does. She's the queen of code names. <laughs> but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about Audible.com, my favorite place for getting... Uh, audio books. It is really my bookstore. Whenever a new book comes out, I always go to audible.com first and say, hey, let's see if it's available in audio. And often it is. I'm reading right now Neil Stevenson's Ring D. Very nice uh, job, actually, on the reading of I think thrillers. And you, How do, you, do you like that book, by no. the way? No. I mean, yeah. I don't hate it. It's just, uh, it's his, it's... I feel like this guy, he wrote Snow Crash, which is one of the best he books ever read. He so many brilliant... Cryptonomicon, yes. unbelievably yes. good. Yes. And then he wrote this trilogy of books that, like, it takes up three feet of width on my bookshelf, and I could never get through any of it. And ever since then, it seems like everything he's written has been very dense. I liked Anathem a lot. I thought that was good. Yeah, this this reminds me of uh, a kind of a cheesy thriller. It's like he almost, I I believe what happened is Neil Stevenson I think said, he, well, he tried to go back to Snow Crash. I, I think, think he's trying to cra cash in. I think he yeah. wants to, I, want, I think he wants Alex Cross well, money. I think he wants the Bourne identity. <laughs> I think he's saying, think, I'm tired of being a suffering... Writing, He's been writing the popularity of those first two books for a long time, and I think a lot of people have been saying, "I want a book like that." Maybe, and I just don't think he writes like that. Maybe anymore. It's not a it's not a well written book, and it's it's okay. I mean, it's you know, it's a it's a good thriller. I I, I would recommend it if it's the the only issue I have is that it's Neil Stevenson, and I expect more from Neil. That's all. Anyway, right. that's neither here nor there. That's just our review. Right. Well, we speaking of people that don't know how to end a book, my <laughs> another good one. My yeah. pick this week is <laughs> from Stephen King, who has had kind of a spotty. Oh, have you listened to his new one? Hmm? You're talking about the new one? Yeah, actually. So I've not finished it yet, so I don't actually know that he screwed up the ending. But, <laughs> but he's, he's the he's best done that way lot, to read lately. a Stephen King novel not to finish yeah. it because don't he finish it. Yeah. Read it right up to the last chapter. Right. Um, no, this one is fascinating and actually pretty well done. And the amazing thing about this to me is I, I'm starting to see something in the mainstream press where people are starting to appreciate Stephen King for what finally. he is, which I think is one of our uh, great, greatest, the greatest writers. writers of our time. And he's get, finally getting out of that kind of horror writer pigeonhole thing. So this one is, it's, of course, now it's like a time travel story, but it's basically about a, a town in Maine, which, of course, has some portal that allows you to go back in time. And so this guy decides to try to find out whether... Um, I almost said John Wilkes Booth, whether uh, Oswald uh, uh, killed the president, President Kennedy, and if so, uh, then he will try to prevent it. And uh, it's a, a lot of it is about the type of investigation that, you know, people could do on their own right now, just using all of the evidence we have. But he actually goes back and is able to do it uh, in that day and age. And I think the fascinating thing about this book actually is, is the way it's almost like it's like Mad Men where I wasn't alive at that time, but I watched this and I think this is exactly what that was like. And Stephen King does a great job of portraying the world of the early 1960s. And uh, it's, a, it's oh, just fantastic. I cannot fantastic. wait. It's, it's, it's fact, really, really well done. I'm buying it right now. So yeah, it's a good one. Here's how you get it for free, kids. Go to audible.com slash windows. And uh, we're gonna, that's right where you go there. You sign up for the uh, gold account. That's a book a month. But your first month's free. Your first book's free. You can cancel at any time so you don't have to pay a penny. And it's yours to keep forever. That's a $45 value. Free... And from Amazon.com. Now, I have a subscription, so uh, you see this is the process of buying it. 
be, you know, I have a credit, so I'm going to use my credit. This is what you'll be doing if you're watching the video. I'm buying this book because that's how much I like this book. I could tell already when you described it, Time Portal, Kennedy. I'm I'm there, kids. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to complete course, the purchase. Oh, obviously, the anniversary of the uh, Kennedy assassination. Right. Just it was by, timely. So. Yeah. And I'm with you. I think Stephen King, uh, who gets, uh, you know, because he's a genre writer, often, uh, I think, gets uh, underestimated. I I always does. And actually, I would say, you know, if you look at books like The Stand or even It, you know, this is a guy who can write characters really, really well and somehow keep these crazy intervening backstories, you know, going. Brilliant, and it's brilliant guy. Yeah, I really do think he's undervalued. And, but even his prose, if you just read his prose, is beautifully yeah. written. And so that's that's the thing. I mean, this guy's a great writer. I cannot wait. Um, so now now that I bought it, and you saw how easy it was, took you seconds, it's in my library. I can listen to it now. I can download it. I can put it on an iPod, an iPhone, uh, a Zune, a Windows phone. Oh, can't play on a Windows yeah, phone. Yeah, Sorry yeah. about that. Don't forget to mention that. Uh, I mean, this is coming just soon, coming soon. Uh, you can listen to it on your computer. Uh, it's just great. Audible.com slash Windows. Now, you can listen to it on your Kindle. You can, if you, not the cheapest one, but not you can get the, not on, the cheap one. on the Fire. Where in fact they have the Audible app on the uh, Kindle Fire, as they do on the yes, iPhone do. and Android phone. That makes it very easy. Your whole library is available at any time. Now I gotta say, that's our pick for this week. But there, and we pick a new book whenever we uh, have an ad for Audible because you know it's fun. But you have your choice. There are a hundred thousand books here, most of which are one credit, except for the very longest books. That means you can uh, pick one up right now. This is, by the way, the number two download today, right after uh, Michael Connolly's The Drop. I don't know that. A Harry Bosch book, 17. And right yep. before Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. Uh, you can see Grisham, Ivanovich, a lot of the th people love the mysteries and the thrillers and all of this. Yeah, this pro I'm sure the new Alex Cross book is in there somewhere. Oh, you bet. You bet. Awesome. That's interesting. Audible.com slash Windows. Get it for free. Uh, or any of these, almost any of these uh, books that you see here, 100,000 titles on audible.com slash windows. I, somebody in the chat room says, when are you narrating a book, but Jen asks, I'd love to do it. I just don't have the time because it's a fairly long process to uh, do it. <laughs> Some of these things are 22 hours long. Yeah. You know? This one, this one you yeah. just recommended is over 30. I would love to do yeah. it, but, uh, but I, I think it's not in the cards, at least until I retire. I don't think I could make it through a book. My, I would lose my voice. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. All right, yeah. let us uh, continue on. We are in the uh, the end end game of the show, which means we get our tip, software pick, enterprise pick, and code name of the week. Let's start with the tip of the week from Paul Therott. This one's just fun. I mean, it's not the full Windows Phone experience, but it's pretty good. It basically it's a web-based emulator of Windows Phone, with, where the phone has been populated with fake user data, so you can really kind of experience it, and you run it in the web browser of your um, iPhone or Android, and it's it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> it works pretty well. You know what I haven't tried actually is whether this would work in the web browser of Windows Phone, and then whether from the web browser in the emulator I could load it again. No, no, that's crossing the stream. The world would end. <laughs> exactly, it's like time travel. Anyway, what it does is it gives you a nice uh, look at you know the tile-based UI and the various apps. It, it's not the full thing. You know, you can't. It doesn't do voice control and all that stuff, but it's. It's pretty good, and if you go into the email app, there's email in there. You can look at that, see what the fonts look like, and all that. <laughs> it's wild. It's yeah, it's actually pretty good. Now, it's, do I do it by surfing to a website, or do I download some? Yeah, you don't. There's no. You don't download anything. You just go to the uh, to the website. Let me. It's it has a um, <clears throat> aka dot ms. I guess yeah, that's so the Microsoft short shortening URL. Uh, like slash wp demo aka. Let me just type this in. I'm very, <laughs> I can really I'm freak curious. somebody out. Dot U S, or sorry, dot M S. Microsoft yep. WP demo slash W P D E M. Oh, I'm curious to see if the, yeah, yeah. So when you do this, <laughs> if you do it on a Windows Phone, it says we've noticed you're already using a Windows Phone. <laughs> <laughs> Please, yeah, that's smart. Okay, so they were smart enough to do that. Good. For this them. is good. It says welcome. Tap start demo and see how Windows Phone makes it easier. This is actually freaking brilliant. Yeah. So uh, tap or swipe. All right, so it's loading. <laughs> now I'm going to go full screen on my... Uh, can I go right, full screen? Should, I may not... This browser may not go full... Oh, yeah, there it goes. Look at that! <laughs> yep. 
Now that looks just like <laughs> oh, and that's wrong. the Samsung phone you have, you know. Yeah, it is. In fact, if I show you next to the Windows phone that I have, <laughs> it's got somebody else's content in there, but <laughs> it's the same it's the same yeah. phone. Isn't that funny? Look at that. What yep. a way to do that. Of course, you can't put your content on it. I mean, it's not. No, but but the, one of the problems with Windows Phone is that it really comes to life when there's content. You know, when you log in with your Windows Live ID, it populates, you know, the People Hub and your email and all that stuff. And and what this does is it at least emulates that. Because when you see it in the store, you really don't get the full experience. Right. Plus, it gives them a chance. You can see that little blue circle thing. Yeah. That, a lot of the screens have a little bit of a hint. Right. You know, because you might not be used to, as That's an iPhone swipe. user, swiping yeah. to go left or right through screens or right. whatever. And it gives you little hints about, the, you know, some of the things you can do. Uh, unfortunately, Android also has a swipe, yeah. so it's, conf it's confused. It's um, this is really, and you know what? It feels snappy. It feels fair, fairly like. Yeah, not fairly, bad, you know, yeah. for a little website. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty doing, cool. Yeah. That's, that's just going to confuse the hell out of people. Yep. <laughs> you put Windows on your iPhone? <laughs> wow. Oh, you put your iPhone in my Windows. Oh. Your software, yeah, but so that, again, I'll, I'll say it again, is... Uh, um, what was it? A. Oh, now I forgot. A. It's uh, Akamai. So A K A. A K A, -A dot M S, M -S slash dot, W uh, slash W P D. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's good. Neat. Our software pick of the week. I <laughs> love this, this one. A last minute substitution. I originally had some kind of pragmatic, you know, software utility thing, but this one was just too fun. So Activision has released a version of the Zombies game, which was that. Uh, Call of Duty game type that started back in the World at War game, and then uh, Treyarch added it back again to Black Ops, and now they have a version for the iPad. So you may remember that there was a Call of Duty Zombies game for the iPhone before. Right, right. Uh, I don't remember if that was an iPad game, too. I think it was just iPhone, but this one's iPhone and iPad. I have to say, having played it on both, it is, in fact, dramatically better on the iPad because on the iPhone, at least for me, I, I have a lot of trouble reading the, the tiny text. And in, in the beginning, especially when you're learning how to play the game, there's another character talking to you or, you know, uh, through text bubbles. And I, I almost couldn't read it. It was just too small on the iPhone. Uh, but on the iPad, of course, it's not it's not an issue. And the presentation is amazing. I mean, it, it's it uh, a lot of the UI in the game, not in the actual game, but in the menus and so forth, looks like an old comic book where it was printed in a newspaper so you can almost see, kind of see things fading through from the other side of the page and it's just oh, it's got a neat. really neat uh presentation but it's it's well done you know uh, shooters are a little difficult on a touch screen but we've i think we've arrived at this system now where you kind of you hold the corners of the screen and your left hand is used to uh, you, you know move you back and forward left and right and then your right hand you kind of swirl around in the screen to you know to change the look you can look up and down and all that stuff and, um, yeah, it's just it's really well done. It's really, really well done. And if you're a fan of the zombie stuff, you know, I I'm, I actually don't spend a lot of time playing the zombies games. My son uh, probably lost a year of his life just playing zombies. But um, it, this is a, a really faithful <laughs> rendition of that kind of game and uh, is just really, really well done. It looks like almost like Castle Wolfenstein. I love it. Yeah, it's not it's not the same kind of game. It really right. really what it is is a survival game. So you're basically in a room. There are some doors or windows that the zombies can get through. You shoot the zombies through those openings. They break through. You have to repair the breakage. You have a bunch of different weapons you can select uh, as you gain points and so forth. Um, it, it, it's basically like a like a classic video game of old. You know, like a Space Invaders or whatever. It's basically a, a race against time and just trying to see how long you can last. Well, you, thank you, Paul. You've just given me my pick for iPad today. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I did that I, I last should point time. Out, it's a, no, it's a good one. It, it's, uh, you know, for an iPad game, it's $7. That's actually very expensive, yeah. it, so it's at the high end. But you know what? Um, this is, as you, you can tell just by looking at it, it's just a really, really well done and very professional game. It's, it's really, really good. Cool. And now because we've bored Mary Jo Foley to tears, <laughs> she gets to... Moment. Turn, return the favor with her <laughs> Enterprise Pick of the Week. Okay, it may not bore you to tears. It's SQL Azure Data Sync Zombie Version. <laughs> yes, finally. finally. See, I knew, I knew, I knew I could bring it back. <laughs> no, sorry, no zombie. No version. zombies. SQL oh. Azure Data Sync. But uh, you know, I think I made this my Enterprise Pick of the Week before, but I'm bringing it back because. Microsoft's really starting to put a lot of emphasis on this now. Um, there's actually three brand new Channel 9 videos if you're interested in this stuff. 
Um, and the reason you should care, I would argue, is SQL Azure Data Sync is what's, what Microsoft is touting as the way to better sync up SQL Azure and SQL Server. So in one of these webcasts, they talk about um, how SQL Azure Data Sync can be used to share data between on-prem SQL and SQL Azure. They've got another one for enterprise cloud data sync. So, you know, this is for enterprise users who are kind of on the fence about the cloud, like, uh, you know, I want to try SQL Azure in the cloud, but I, I'm so dependent on what's in SQL Azure on-prem. So Microsoft's trying to kind of smooth your way and give you a, a migration path and, and encourage you to try this uh, technology, which is in preview form, uh, to see if you can actually more easily get your data from your uh, data center on-prem into the cloud. Are you looking for one of those videos? <laughs> I'm actually watching Mark Scarell, You're program manager, wow. talk about... See, if they, had, if they had a zombie jump up in the middle of it, it might be a little more fun, but... Um, I agree. I think, I think Mark's doing a good job. <laughs> 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 All right, there you go. Yeah, play, Channel 9 has a whole series of uh, uh, videos, including uh, some new ones that just came out uh, a couple of days ago. So there yeah. you go. So go watch those. Mm -hmm. Go watch those instead mm -hmm. of watching zombies. Right. Well, Get something done. Be productive. Get something done. <laughs> and now our code name pick of the week. Okay, code name pick of the week is um, something to do with Windows 8 since we've had a very Windows 8 heavy show this week. Um, the code name pick is Protagon, and Protagon um, was something that showed up in the early builds of Windows 8. It was um, the code name for a file system. And at first, when people heard about it, they were saying, oh, maybe this is the replacement for NTFS. Um, no, no replacement for NTFS. Um, instead, people have now kind of been hinting around that it might be more like a content file system or maybe even um, like a relational file system. And so the reason I made it my pick this week is uh, there have been tips on the Win Unleaked site, uh, which I saw from Win Rumors that said uh, the real name of Protagon is going to be REFS, REFS. I would, I will, I'm kind of wondering if it means relational files. Ooh, stuff. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so it, I think this, I'm pretty sure this isn't yet activated in uh, the developer preview, but when that beta comes out, I bet this will be in there. Hmm. That's not really an, is it a new file system? It's, or it an update? Took, yeah, I think it's a supplemental file system to NTFS. So it's not replacing an existing file system. It's more so like an, an, an additional system. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this exciting, thrilling, gripping edition of Zombies Meet Windows. Uh, Paul Therott is the editor-in-chief of the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. He's also the author of many great books, including the Windows Phone Secrets. You can get that in the bookstore today for your Windows, your brand new Windows phone. And what is that? Look at that. He's got a bumper sticker, or is that a magnet? It's a bumper sticker. I like it. It's got the Windows I'm gonna phone. I'm going to drive around Boston and randomly put this on people's cars. And see if they know what it is. Right. I think I saw that on my <laughs> iPhone. I uh... No. And Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com is, uh, is the fastest way to get to her site where she posts all the time on ZDNet's blog, all about Microsoft.com. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you. Great to have you here. Thank you, Paul. And thank you all for joining us. We do Windows Weekly every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that's 1900 UTC. Uh, and we will do it next week at that time, I believe, but I will be in France, so uh, I think I as will uh, be doing the honors next Thursday. Okay. All right. Thank you all for being here. You can uh, download uh, the show if you don't get it live, of course. We make all of our shows available in audio and video form at our website, twit, T -W -I -T, dot TV. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly.